What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tastes Like Music. Jason and Joe here, coming at you with a new album review. Uh, we're talking about the new Big Thief record today called Dragon, New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. Uh, we're a little bit late on this one. We usually like to get the reviews out the week of. This one came out last week, uh, but Tom Waits week was kicking our butts. We couldn't quite get to it, but we're getting to it now uh, because uh, I have to uh, gush over it a bit. Uh, but before I do that, uh, what do you think of it? Well, uh, it's tough for me to talk about this record. I wish I hadn't known your opinion on it because it makes me want to dislike it. But kind of like the, the Black Country New Road, I do like this one. I didn't like Big Thief before, really. Um, UFOF and Two Hands really didn't do anything for me. Uh, I, thought, I thought they were kind of sleepy, typical indie stuff. Uh, I like this one a lot, but I can't give it that high of a rating because there's at least eight songs that I would just take off this album. Just, In fact, I would just like men in black them out of their minds if they never come back. Because I think there's a bunch of kind of lame songs on here, but when they hit the groove, and it's probably just my taste, I'm not saying they're bad songs, but they just do nothing for me. But when they're in the groove that I like, that kind of femme, Neil Young, Harvest, after the gold rush sound, and they get kind of almost folky country, little swing in it. I think it's fantastic. And I just wish there was more of that, less of stuff like Simulation Swarm, which gets into Sonic Youth territory for me way too much. I really don't like that guitar solo. Sorry. Um, and stuff like that, that and Love, 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 just that's kind of like that indie, typical indie rock stuff I'm bored with. I don't need any more of that in my life. And I don't know why they would have picked Simulation Swarm as a lead single. Not that it really matters in this day and age, but that's going to be a big turnoff to anyone who isn't like you or Crams or the normal listening audience. I mean, there's at least eight or nine songs I would have picked that kind of gives you the big thief feeling better than that one, I thought. But I could just be way off on my big thiefdom. I am new to the to the scene here. Man, I don't think we've done a, a review together where I've disagreed with you so much before. I'm used to it in the uh, listography videos, but wow, I love Simulation Swarm. I think it's awesome. One of the more like heavily produced tracks on the record, but man, I love that guitar solo. I love the guitar tone. It's so like wonky sounding, but awesome at the same time. But I've been a big fan of Big Thief for a while since their first record came out. Loved uh, Masterpiece, loved um, Capacity, the two records from 2019. I loved uh, Adrian Lenker's uh, solo records. Abyss Kiss was a top 10 uh, the year that that came out. I've loved both of Buck Meek's solo records. He came number two last year for me with Two Saviors. So I I'm a pretty big fan. But I think this is maybe their best work yet coming out with a double album i think they're like hitting their stride hitting their peak and i think it's the perfect time to do a double album and they recorded it in four separate locations so you, so you get all the different tracks kind of mixed up with different feels different vibes uh and it just it works for me it's it's not like let's go for one sound for 40 minutes and give like one specific vibe it's it's very much like a we're a multi-dimensional group of musicians we're versatile here's everything we're capable of all the different sides of us and and i love double albums that work that way um it's like the white album or uh yellow brick road or even tusk even though tusk doesn't bounce around quite as much uh but I love those kind of double records. And I think this is a great one. I think Lanker's writing is so, so good. She strikes me as someone that's very like pure in her artistic pursuits. I saw them live at Newport. And it was the middle of the afternoon at a festival, you know, it's not like necessarily the best uh, vibe always for, for putting on a rock show. And I think she wasn't really feeling it. It, it wasn't like happening for her, you know? 
So she actually said, said that to the audience, like, uh, this isn't feeling right. She takes off her guitar. She, she puts it aside and just goes straight to like mic in hand and delivered a knockout performance that got the entire crowd giving a standing ovation. It was uh, like an, a transcendent moment and that she's able to tap into that sort of thing almost at will, it seems like. Buck's guitar playing, I think, is really cool and inventive. But without being too showy, it really is all about the songs. I think he's a really cool player. And I think the rhythm section is awesome. Really tight, really fat sound. Even going back to their debut when they come in on, on the first track, and it just hits like a like a like a big slab of of low end. And it's awesome. They sound great here. I love the way it bounces around from, from sound to sound. It, it doesn't like stack too many of the same type of songs back to back. It's it's always moving because I think. If you had too many of the, the folky songs uh, next to each other, it would get boring or it would drag or, and it would feel like an 80 minute record. But I think this feels like closer to like 40 or 50 minutes just because it's moving so much and changing up and, and keeping things interesting the whole time. I absolutely love it. It's definitely my favorite album of the year so far. It's a five-star record for me. I think it's an instant classic. Uh, it's not going to make five stars for me. And I mean, I get what you're saying. I do think it's good when bands have a lot of different kind of wheelhouses. But this one just dragged for me around, I don't know, 13, track 14. Uh, Wake Me Up to Drive, Didn't Love, 12,000 Lines, Simulation Swarm, kind of that, that area. I was kind of just ready for it to be done. And I do think Lanker... Good songwriter, a little too cutesy. Some of the lyrics kind of a little cloying to me. It's just kind of like, oh, well, that's, that's a, a thing you could say there. Um, but I don't want to be all negative because I do love the first track, Change. I think Time Escaping is awesome with that percussion, um, the kind of weirdness of it all. Uh, but it comes back with like a, a catchy chorus, which I like a lot. Flower of Blood. They kind of do this like moody alternative style. Uh, Red Moon, really love that. Uh, Dried Roses, The Only Place has some really great guitar um, from Buck on that one. Really pretty. Uh, Blue Lightning's great. So it's not like I don't like many, many of these songs. It's just as a 80 minute proposition, it just gets to me a little bit. I don't love her voice, so it's never going to quite work for me the way it works for you. But, I mean, they're obviously incredibly talented. I have nothing bad to say about any of the playing. Um, so it's, I have, it, I, I have it at three and a half. I can't change it. It could maybe do four. There's definitely four, four and a half stars worth here. If I could just go in and trim it a little bit, just a little boop, boop. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good album, maybe just not my preferred style, but um, unlike maybe like Black Country New Road, where I think it's just a lame, um, I do like this band. Like I, I like who they are, I like their style, but I don't know, there's just something about it that'll never quite click for me, so three and a half stars as far as I can go right now. Uh, so the last thing that I, I just want to add before we go, I think I've made my thoughts on the record pretty clear, uh, but I do want to give a shout to the drummer, James, I don't know how to say his last name, Kravechnia, I guess, uh, but he produced the record. This is the first record that they've done that hasn't been produced by Andrew Sarlo, who I'm a huge fan of. I think his production is always awesome, but I think, you know, James holds down the fort uh, exceedingly well here. They do work with a bunch of like really good engineers and stuff. The different studios that they bounced around to, they worked at uh, Sam Evian's studio. They worked at Sean Everett's studio. He's an incredible engineer. So the record still sounds fantastic. Uh, they worked with Scott McMicken uh, in his studio in Arizona. He's uh, from Dr. Dog. I think the record sounds really great. Production doesn't miss a beat without Andrew Sarlo, and Andrew Sarlo does mix a couple of the tracks on the record. I just wanted to give him a shout because I think he did a, a great job pulling all these different um, sounds from different studios together and making it work 
uh, I think pretty cohesively. I mean, it does bounce around, but I do think it, it works as a unit of songs. I don't think it feels uh, terribly disjointed or anything. So if you have heard this record, let us know what you think of it. Do you love it as much as I do? Uh, do you like it, but only as much as Joe? Or do you not like it at all? Let us know down in the comments. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so yet. You can also find a ton of links in our description, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, merch, and our website. Uh, check any and all of that out if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.